They've earned themselves a one-way ticket out of Australia after committing crimes so bad they'll never be allowed back. But some say the government's tough approach is too harsh. They can expect to leave our country uh, as swiftly as I can cancel the visa and see them deported. The predators are real. They are in our suburbs. This is an extra punishment being kicked out of a country they may have lived in for a very long time. These are the exclusive pictures showing foreign sex offenders' last steps on Australian soil. Ian Hay is a pedophile from Geelong, about to be deported from Perth Airport. The 60-year-old is on his way back to his native UK, marked never to return to Australia. He was convicted in a Geelong court of sexually assaulting three young sisters. He befriended the girl's father only to attack three of his daughters, one of them while she was sleeping. The judge described his offending as dreadful and depraved. He was sentenced to just 14 months in jail, but upon completion had the mandatory cancellation of his visa and was then deported. I believe that we make our society a safer place and we save future victims falling prey to these pedophiles if we can deport them from our country. Home Affairs Minister Peter Dutton is the architect of Australia's tough laws cancelling visas for foreign-born criminals. I think I'm speaking for 99% of the public when I say that we don't want people offending against children in our society. Creeps like John Alexander Kenyon, another British pedophile who came to Australia on a holiday trying to lure young girls to his camper van. He was travelling down the east coast from Cairns to Sydney where he had made arrangements with what he thought was a 13-year-old girl to have sex with him. He was actually an undercover officer from the New South Wales Police Child Exploitation Unit. Officers arrested him in the Sydney suburb of Westmead where he was waiting in his van with a makeshift bed in the back. He was convicted and sentenced to two years jail, suspended after 16 months. Upon completion, he was taken straight to Sydney Airport in handcuffs and put on a flight back to the UK. I mean, anyone who would lure a 13-year-old girl to their camper van, and, and it's just frightening. Criminal lawyer Richard Mitry believes the tough deportation policy does have a deterrent effect. For them to know that they might be kicked out of the country and never be able to return, you'd think that they'd think twice before committing such a serious and disgusting offence. Last year, a total of 137 criminals had their visas cancelled due to a sexual offence. 92 of those were for child sex offences. This year, there's been 31 sex offenders in just the first two months. 19 of them were pedophiles. The policy has attracted criticism from civil libertarians and some lawyers, in particular when the offender has lived most of their life in Australia. Some lawyers are thinking, is that one step too far? People have called it draconian and, and really, in some circumstances, it might be. What do you say to critics of the policy who say it's too harsh? Well, who are they? I mean, who, who are these people that don't want to protect our children? And we've cancelled now the visas of some 4,200 criminals. That's up uh, at one stage by about 1,200%. With the country now in election mode, the future of Peter Dutton's hardline deportation policy is up for debate. We contacted Labor's would-be Immigration Minister Shane Newman for an interview, but were told he was unavailable to talk to us. Last year, it emerged his office had lobbied the Immigration Department repeatedly to stop the deportation of a convicted murderer, saying he was a sincere and considerate man who wanted to continue his quiet lifestyle. His spokesperson said Mr Newman did not authorise nor sanction this letter. I think they will water the laws down because that's what they did when they were last in government and we toughened the laws and that's what's seen a dramatic increase in the number of visa cancellations. Mr Newman said in a statement Labor strongly supports the laws in place to cancel or refuse visas on character grounds. On the day the election was called, Minister Dutton was touring the new Australian centre to counter child exploitation, currently being fitted out in Brisbane. It will give NGOs like the Daniel Morecambe Foundation a seat at the table with law enforcement to stop online predators. We spoke with Daniel's father, Bruce Morecambe. 
It's a collaborative approach between both government and non-government institutions, but at the end of the day, we're all here for the one mission, protect our kids. The centre started work from existing facilities last July and has already saved 23 Australian children from ongoing harm and has assisted in the removal of 46 children from harm internationally. Our kids are much more exposed now to threats from here and overseas than ever before. This vision shows a Turkish pedophile being deported after grooming a 13-year-old Perth girl online. Kamal Ferda Sekendiz was sentenced to 14 months jail after pleading guilty to four counts of indecency. Uh, the predators are real, they are in our suburbs and we need to do all we can to make sure that we educate the kids um, on the best ways to stay safe, remove them from potential danger but most importantly uh, to report. And just to reiterate, we certainly did give the Labor spokesman plenty of time to arrange an on-camera interview with us, but all we got was a statement which you will find on our website.